Hello everyone. Today I am Rishabh Bharadwaj, Assistant Professor from the Mechanical Department, taking the lecture of uh, Applied Thermodynamics. Today in this lecture we will learn about the compressible flow. We have the various topics uh, for the today that the introduction of the flow, thermodynamics relation, stagnation properties, the speed of sound in the mass number, one dimensional isentropic flow and converging nozzle, converging and diverging nozzles, normal shock waves and the oblique shock waves. Let's start with the compressible flow. As the flow, uh, compressible flow is that flow that involves significant changes in density are called compressible flow. Therefore, the density in the Cartesian coordinate that are x, y and z must be treated as the field variable rather than a simply a constant. Typically, significant, uh, typically uh, the significant density variations starts to appear when to flow match number exceeds 0.3 or so. The effect becomes exceptionally large when the match number approaches and exceeds unity. Here we will learn about the flow that involve significant changes in density. That such flows are called as the compressible flow. They are frequently encountered in devices that involve the flow of gases at very high speed, such as flow in gas turbine engine co components. Many aircrafts fly fast enough to, to involve the compressible flow. The, gases, uh, the gas has very large compressibility but its velocity is low, com low as compared to the sonic velocity. The change in density is small and it is then treated as an incompressible flow. When a fluid moves at speed compared to comparable to its speed of sound or density, Changes become, uh, become significant and flow is term, it termed incompressible. Such flows are difficult to obtain in liquid since high pressure of order 1000 atmospheric pressure are needed to generate sonic velocities. In the gases, however, a pressure ratio of only 2 ratio 1 will likely cause sonic flow. Thus, compressible flow is quite common and this subject is known as the gas dynamics. Let's start with the thermodynamics relationship and it will tell us the meaning and the main relationship between them. Let's uh, start with the equation of states that uh, can be written as PV is equal to RT which is more similar thermodynamic form where R is the gas constant that shows R is equal to R0 by N where R0 is a universal gas constant and the having the value 8314 joule per kg Kelvin and uh, M is the molecular weight uh, for taking an example of air the M is 28.96. The gas constant will become 8314 by 28.96 is equal to the 287 joule per kg Kelvin. Next we have then the assuming the internal energy and the enthalpy per unit as given by Enthalpy internal en energy will be the E and the enthalpy as H. The specific heat at constant volume that is Cv that will be DE is equal to Cv dt. 
and the specific heat at the constant pressure is dH is equal to Cp dt. The specific enthalpy denoted by H and related to the this variable by H is equal to E plus PV. For the calorically perfect gas which is an excellent mole of air mode of air mode for air at moderate temperatures both E and H are directly proportional to the temperature therefore E is equal to CV, CVT and H is equal to CPT where CV and CP are the specific heat constant where at the constant pressure respective H minus E is equal to PV it means CP minus CV into T and the compare, comparing the equation state we can see that Cp minus C is equal to R and defining the ratio of the specific heat gamma is equal to Cp by Cv and uh, the ratio will come 1.4 for the air So the, the Cp and Cv can be replaced with the equivalent variable gamma and R and for hard rates remember to it that uh, gamma is 1.4 the value will become for, uh, like this uh, then we have the first law of thermodynamics let's consider a thermodynamics uh, system consists of a small leg ranges control volume moving the flow over the short interval of time dt the cv undergoes a process where it uh, works with uh, work del w and the heat is del q from its surroundings per unit mass this process result in changes in the heat the state cv and described by the increment of de th and dp as the first law says that energy neither be created nor be destroyed we, uh, we have the equation that del q plus del w is equal to del e this states that whatever energy added to the system and the whether by heat or by the work is it must appear as increase in the internal energy the adiabatic process where no heat is transferred or change of heat is equal to zero this rule out heating the cv via conduction through its boundary or combustion inside the cv the reversible process is no dissipation occur implies that work done be only via volumetric compression or dw is equal to minus pdv this rules out work done by the friction force if we're talking about the isentropic process which is both adiabatic and reversible implies that that will be the minus pdv is equal to de the uh, the isentropic relation in the thermodynamics that aerodynamic flows are effective in basket uh, outside bound of boundary layers this implies that the negligible heat conduction and the friction force and hence are isentropic therefore along the path line followed by the cv if we have a particle with moving a pa uh, moving with the path and having boundary upper and the lower having these are the boundaries the forces that applies that will be the pdv and the ener energy E and after energy that will be E plus DE that is the internal energy of the system then PDV is equal to DE the solution that integrates the uh, following substitution next uh, in this category we have the stagna uh, stagnation property uh, for this uh, we have a, uh, a diagram which shows the diffusion 
let's consider a fluid flowing in a diffuser at velocity v temperature t and pressure p and enthalpy h and etc here the ordinary property t p h and etc are called as static properties that is they are me measured relative to the flow at the flow velocity the diffuser is significantly long and the exit area is sufficiently large that the fluid is brought to zero or the rest at the diffuser exit while no work or heat transfer is done the resulting state is called stagnation state in the figure you can see there is a diffuser by which some enthalpy velocity temperature and pressure and etc particles are moving toward the diffuser after passing to the diffuser end exist uh, end or the exist phase the value should be this zero or come at to the rest we are applying the first law per unit mass for the entrance or the exit and neglect the potential energies and uh, the inlet state be unsubscribed and the exit or the stagnation state have been subscribed to q plus h plus v square by 2 is equal to work done work done uh, work done by work done plus h not plus v not by 2 since the exit velocity in work heat transfer that will be the h not is equal to h plus uh, v square by 2 the term h not is called the stagnation enthalpy where it has been noted as the enthalpy it is the enthalpy of the fluid attained when brought to the adiabatic uh, adiabatically while no work done is no work is done now the stagnation property if in addition the process is also reversible the process is isentropic and the inlet and the exit entropies are equal it means the entropy at the initial or and the final will be constant or same the stagnation enthalpy and the entropy define the stagnation state and the isentropic stagnation pressure p not the actual stagnation pressure for reversible flow will be somewhat less uh, less than the isentropic stagnation pressure as shown in the figure you can see that uh, we have the diagram or the graph between the enthalpy and the entropy where the actual uh, bottom state that is the uh, actual state and the final is the stagnation state if the pressure increases the pressure will goes to p to p not and at the constant temperature or the enthalpy you can see there we have we have some uh, h not values that will be actual p not actual that is the actual stagnation state where uh, the pressure will goes due to the velocity uh, rises or the flow pressure uh, flow velocity will enhance the enthalpy of that state enthalpy enthalpy uh, h not is uh, remains at the constant phase but some entropy will act and provide some deflection over there let's move to the example that is steam we have a steam at 400 degree celsius with 
वन मेगा पास्कल एंड थ्री हंड्रेड मीटर पर सेकेंड फ्लो थ्रू अ पाइप वी हैव टू फाइंड द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ द स्टीम एट द स्टेग्नेशन स्टेट एज द गिवन सोल्यूशन गिवन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द क्वेश्चन वी हैव टी इज इक्वल टू फोर हंड्रेड डिग्री सेल्सियस प्रेशर इज वन मेगा पास्कल एंड थेलपी इज थ्री टू सिक्स फोर पॉइंट फाइव के जी पर जूल एंड एंट्रोपी इज सेवन पॉइंट फोर सिक्स सेवन जीरो दीज एंथेलपी एंड एंट्रोपी हैज बिन कैरिड आउट बाय द स्टीम टेबल बाय द स्टीम टेबल बाय पुटिंग द वैल्यूज एट एच नॉट इज इक्वल टू एच प्लस एच नॉट प्लस एच ना एच नॉट इज इक्वल टू एच प्लस वी स्क्वायर बाय टू एंड पुटिंग दिस वैल्यूज इनटू टू वी विल गेट द एंथेलपी दैट इज थ्री थ्री जीरो नाइन पॉइंट फाइव किलो जूल पर केजी व्हेन वी मूव टू द move to the entropy part that is the entropy will is equal to the, the standard equation uh, standard entropy that is of initial and the final will be same that is of 7.4670 kJ per kg that uh, that will be then an h not is equal to h p not an entropy s not we can find the p not by trial and error The resulting stagnation property are P naught is one point one six mega pascal at the temperature of four point two two point two degree Celsius, and the density will be the three point six four zero. Let's move the ideal gas result through the ideal gas. We can rewrite the equation that H H naught. Minus H is equal to the V square by two. For the ideal gas with the constant specific heat, the enthalpy difference become C P at T T naught minus T is equal to V square by two, where the T naught is the temperature and is defined as the stagnation temperature. That is T naught by T T naught minus T. That is V square by two degree. Celsius. For the isentropic process, the stagnation pre, uh, stagnation pressure can be determined as the T naught by T is equal to P naught by P the raised to the power k minus one by the k. The the ratio of the stagnation density to the static density can be expressed in the terms of P naught or uh, Rho naught by rho is equal to T naught by T raised to the power one by k minus one. Let's take the second example for this. Uh, for this, that uh, we have an aircraft which is flying at a cruising speed of two fifty meter per second at an altitude of five hundred five thousand meter. Where the atmospheric pressure lies is fifty four point zero five kilo pascal, and the ambient pre air pressure air temperature is twenty two fifty five point seven kelvin. The ambient air is first deaccelerate in the diffuser before it starts in the compressor. The assumption that had that we have to take that uh, that uh, both the diffuser and the compressor to be Isentropic. Then we have to find out the stagnation pressure at the compressor inlet, and the require required compressor work per unit mass. If the stagnation pressure the uh, pressure ratio of the compressor is eight, then for the uh, in, uh, initial phase we have taken the diffuser fa phase. And the compressor phase. At at the diffuser phase, we have that values. T one is two two five point seven Kelvin, 
प्रेशर इज फिफ्टी फोर पॉइंट जीरो फोर फाइव किलो पास्कल एंड वेलोसिटी इज टू मीट वन टू फिफ्टी मीटर पर सेकेंड देन द हाई एट द हाई स्पीड एयर एंटर्स द डिफ्यूजर एंड द कंप्रेसर ऑफ एन एयरक्राफ्ट द स्टैग्नेशन प्रेशर ऑफ द एयर एंड द कंप्रेसर वर्क इनपुट टू बी डिटरमाइंड The assumptions that had taken that both the diffuser and the compressor are isentropic, and second, the air is at ideal gas with constant heat specific at a room temperature. The properties that are that has to be assumed that are the constant pressure specific heat Cp and the specific heat ratio K of the room at the temperature are. Cp is one point zero zero five kg per k uh, kilo joule per kg Kelvin, and the K value is one point four. Then analyzing the stand uh, stagnation temperature at the compressor inlet can be determined in the form of T naught is equal to T one plus V one square by two Cp. That will be the by putting these values in the equation we will get the 286.8 kelvin then then the pressure at the uh, point to 1 is equal to p1 uh, p1 in p1 into t t01 by t1 and raised to the power k by k plus 1 by putting this value uh, all these values Standard values to the equation, we will get eighty point seven seven kilopascal. That is the temperature of air. Uh, air air would increase by thirty one point one degree Celsius, and the pressure by twenty twenty six point seven two kilopascal. As air is deaccelerating from two fifty meter per second to zero velocity, these increase in the temperature. and the pressure of air are due to conversion of the kinetic energy into the enthalpy last to determine the compressor work we need to know the stagnation temperature of air at that will be the uh, t02 is equal to t01 by In uh, by no sorry T zero one into P zero two by P zero one with the rest to power K minus one by K and that shows that will shows and give the value of five one nine point five Kelvin. This regarding the potential energy changes and the heat transfer, the compressor work per uh, work per unit mass of air that will be the work input. That will be equal to the Cp into T zero two minus T zero one, and that will gives the value to two to two thirty three point nine kilojoule per kg. Thus, the work supplied to the compressor is two thirty three point nine kilojoule per kg. Hope this uh, lecture will give you a very fruitful and no knowledge for the for the study of uh, applied thermodynamics, and stay tuned for the next by which we are able to learn more about this. Thank you for watching this video.